Hello friends, my name is Dheeraj Vaidya from wallstreetmojo.com. This is part 15 of our ratio analysis video series. And in this installment, we learn all about asset turnover ratio. In simple terms, asset turnover ratio means how much revenue you earn on the basis of the total assets that you have. So this tutorial will focus on four things. Number one, understand what asset turnover ratio is. Number two, what's its formula and the calculations? Number three, we'll apply the formula and the calculations on Colgate case study. And number four, it's interpretations. So before we jump into the tutorial, a quick reminder yet again, we'll be needing the working files of Colgate case study for this video. So if you haven't downloaded it yet, please do so from the description link below. And also to keep yourself updated with the investment banking and core finance concepts, please do subscribe to our channel that is Wall Street Mojo. So let's get started. What is asset turnover ratio? Asset turnover ratio is a part of the ratio analysis framework and it comes under the operating efficiencies. It basically helps us in understanding how much amount of sales a company is able to generate from its assets. So, uh, Another way to look at it is that how effectively whether the company is able to utilize its assets to generate sales or not. So if the company is not doing justice and not able to utilize its assets, this asset turnover ratio will be low. However, if the company is doing an ex exceptional work in, in utilizing its assets, uh, their ratio will be higher. What it essentially gives in simple terms is how much amount of sales are you able to generate from your assets on a per unit term? So let's look at the formula and things will become a bit clearer from there. So here is the formula of asset turnover ratio. So if you look at the formula, its numerator has net sales and in the denominator has average total assets. It's very simple formula to actually look at, but you need to understand what net sales means and you know how uh, you can take it from the income statement. Net sales, it essentially means that uh, it is not equal to gross sales first. Thing. Gross sales is what the top line number of the income statement is all about. So after you deduct all the refunds or uh, let's say returns or the discounts, you know that's when you find you get your net sales numbers. Okay. If the company has reported both your gross sales numbers and net sales numbers, you basically take the net sales numbers here. All right. The second term that's important here is the average total assets. So average total assets is nothing but the average of the total assets from the start of the year and the end of the year. Why do you take the average? Because the total asset number is a balance sheet item. As we have seen in other ratios as well, if an item is a balance sheet item, you usually take it as a average because you don't want to skew your calculations by taking just a single snapshot at a single point in time. Taking an average, you know, smoothens this uh, process of calculating the ratio. This is because, you know, the total assets may change during the year a lot and it might actually, you know, lead to calculations uh, which are out of proportions. So that's why we should always take average when it comes to balance sheet items like in this case it's the total assets now second thing you need to remember here is that when we talk about total assets it's all kinds of assets like the property plant and equipment that's the fixed assets then think of the intangible assets that you cannot touch feel something like copyright you know assets would be in, also include you know goodwill as well there could be cash cash equivalents account receivables inventory all of this is a part of the total assets. So total assets is equal to current assets and the other part of long-term assets which are given there on the balance sheet. So you should take all that as well. Okay, so this is how you calculate the asset turnover ratio. So let us now take an example to understand the asset turnover ratio calculation and its interpretations. So here we have this uh, data or of two companies, company A and company B. And we have been provided with the gross sales data and the sales discount, as well as the assets at the beginning and the assets at the end. So these two are the balance sheet items and gross sales and sales discounts are essentially the income statement items. So this has been provided to us 
and we are expected to calculate the asset turnover ratio and uh, see you know which company is performing better in terms of this ratio as such so uh, what's the formula for asset turnover ratio the formula is net sales divided by average assets okay so this net sales divided by average assets all right so the first step will involve calculation of net sales so what is the net sales as we discussed earlier net sales is gross sales minus the sales discount so here for company a it will be 10000 minus 500 so that comes out to be 9500 as net sales of company a right likewise for company b this will be 7800 because 8000 is the gross sales and 200 is the sales discount okay so this is the net sales numbers the next step is to calculate the average assets right so the average assets is the average of the assets at the beginning and the end of the year so this is we can use the word um, you, the formula average to calculate the average of the assets that is 3000 and 5000 the average will be 4000 and uh, for company b the average assets will be 5000 here because 4000 and 6000 when we add this it becomes 10000 divided by 2 it's 5000 all right so uh, what is the asset turnover ratio the asset turnover ratio is 9500 that is the net sales divided by your average assets okay so this comes out to be 2.375 and uh, for company b it comes out to be 1.56 so as you can see company a is doing better in terms of asset turnover ratio and if both of these companies are in the same industry, we could have interpreted that company A is actually doing much, much better because they are able to generate sales of dollar 2.375 per unit of their, per dollar of their assets. So that's how the interpretation is, right? So between these two, if they are in the same industry, of course, company A is doing much, much better. Now, uh, the next question which I have right now is that how about uh, if the asset turnover ratio, if it is less than one, whether it is good or bad, and uh, when the asset turnover ratio is greater than one, is it good or bad? So of course, the asset turnover ratio, if you look at the absolute number, higher the number, better it is, right? But if in general, if there's a company and you know the asset turnover ratio for that company is let's say less than one whether you can say it is good or bad maybe not you cannot directly come to a conclusion let's say if there's a company company c that has an asset turnover of uh, 0.75 okay. so is it good or bad the answer is we don't know why we don't know because we don't know the industry until and unless we know the industry in which this company C operates. We can't say that. Why are we we actually you know coming to this kind of a conclusion? We are saying this because every industry has its different kind of uh, asset turnover ratios. So uh, just to give you a perspective, uh, let's say if this company C is in utilities, is a utility company, or let's say if it is an energy company, then. If you look at the energy company or utility company asset turnover ratio, it's around 0.50. So this is less than one and all the companies in most cases will be around this number. So if this company C was a utility based company or an energy company, this would have been a much, much better ratio, right? Because this company C is, is generating higher ratio, higher asset turnover, higher sales per unit of assets compared to the peers, right? So the, we cannot generalize, as I said, if asset turnover ratio is less than one, it is bad. We cannot say that, okay? We have to look at the industry. Likewise, when we say that if asset turnover ratio is greater than one, again, we cannot come to the conclusion whether it is good or bad. We have to again look at the industry. Let's say if there is company D, okay, whose asset turnover ratio is, let's say, 1.5, okay? So is it good or bad? Again, the same logic comes here. We don't know. Let's say if I give you a industry, if this industry is 
retail, then what will you say whether company D is uh, doing good or not? Obviously, for you to actually know whether this is good or not, you need to know whether the retail industry asset turnover is uh, greater than one or not. I'll, I'll just tell you what exactly that number is. It's greater than two, actually. This industry operates at a higher asset turnover ratio because they have to quickly churn out uh, sales you know, uh, per unit of assets. So uh, uh, the speed at which they have to churn out sales per unit of asset is much, much faster in retail. So it's usually greater than two on an average. And if this company D is operating in this industry, then this is not doing good, right? Because it is only 1.5. So even though asset turnover ratio was greater than one, but as a whole, if you compare to the industry, it's not doing very good. So that's how you basically interpret the asset turnover ratios. And uh, let's now look at how asset turnover ratios are calculated in the case of Colgate and what kind of interpretations we can get from the same. So here is the balance sheet of uh, Colgate and I want you to scroll down to row number 120. This is where we calculate the total asset turnover of uh, Colgate. And uh, for its calculations, we'll start with December 2017, right? because uh, we don't have the average asset number for December 2016. For calculating average asset of December 2016, we will require the data of end of the year of 2015, for which you know we haven't put it in this Excel sheet. So that's why we will not calculate for December 2016, but we'll start with 2017 as well only. So, and the net sales number, net sales number, where do we get it from? We'll get it from the income statement. All right, so uh, let's start by linking these respective numbers and see how the ratios are. So this is equal to, I'll go to the income statement and uh, for December 2017 year end, the net sales is 15454. Okay, so that's the net sales number that I need to take divided by, so you need to take the average, average of the assets, right? So average of the assets, we get the assets from here. This is the average. Okay, we need to take the start of the December 2017 and the end of 2017. These are the two numbers to look at and bracket closed. So what do we get? We get this number as 1.25. So this means that Colgate is generating dollar 1.25 of sales per unit of its assets. Okay, so that's that's how you can interpret. We can copy and paste this formula across the years to see you know how it has been performing. So we uh, see a declining trend here actually. So it, it has decreased from 1.25 to 1.06. That's a concerning situation as far as Colgate's uh, asset turnovers are concerned. How good or how bad this ratio is, uh, we'll have to compare this to the peers. And maybe, you know, since we have been comparing with, with Procter & Gamble, I'll just give you the data of how that looks like. Procter & Gamble did around uh, 71 million, sorry, billion dollars of sales in 2020. And I think its average assets were around 118 billion dollars. So, if you look at the asset turnover of a Procter & Gamble, that will be 71 divided by 118 billion, that is 0 0.60. So if you look at Procter & Gamble, its asset turnover ratio is 0 0.6. And if you look at uh, Colgate, it is 1.06. So on the basis of uh, you know this asset turnover ratio, Colgate seems to be doing much, much better job as compared to and gambles. But as I said, we have to compare this with the overall industry per se to understand whether this number is, is uh, good or bad, right? So in this case, I've just uh, you know, compared it with uh, Procter & Gamble, but you should do it with respect to the whole industry as well. All right, so I hope you understood what this asset turnover ratio is and how do you calculate it and how do you inter interpret the same. I hope you found this video to be useful. Please do like and share. And if you have any feedback or want to suggest a topic for any future video, then you may do so by writing about it in the comments section. 
Also, we come up with very interesting videos on investment banking and core finance topics regularly. So if you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, then please do so by clicking on the subscribe button below so that you can get the notifications about our latest video as soon as we release one. I hope you enjoyed the video. Have a nice day.